what's up guys, CP Moddy here back with a super exciting video and that is we're testing the GTX 1080 versus the little GTX 1030. Now before we do get into this video any further and before anyone does bother commenting in the comment section saying that this is an unfair test and blah 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 blah, at the end of the day it's not really meant to be and that's not the idea of this video. The idea of this video is to really see how much of a performance difference are you getting between the lowest end Nvidia card and the highest end gaming edition Nvidia card. Now I went ahead and picked up the GTX 1080 Ti for the sole reason is that is the highest end gaming oriented video card on the market. One could make the argument that the Titan X XP, XP 2017, whatever they're calling it, is technically a gaming card, which is completely true. However, the Titan line has always been more aimed at professionals and people doing a little bit more than just playing video games. Sure, you can play decent FPS games on a Titan, but at the end of the day, the GTX line is what is more marketed towards gamers versus the Titan lineup, hence why we went with the 1080 Ti. And again, we're not trying to compare which one gives you the best value and that kind of stuff. We just want to see what kind of a performance difference are we getting between between the lowest of the low in the 10 series and the highest of the high in the 10 series as well. So for today's testing, we paired it up with the Core i7 7700K at stock speeds for both the 1030 and the 1080, and we also too went ahead and threw 16 gigs of RAM, an SSD, and, and a water cooler, and kind of an overkill build. Now for those of you asking why on earth did we use a 7700K with the 1030, at the end of the day, I wanted the test to be fair across the board. Sure, that 7700K is going to be bottlenecked by that 1030, but at the end of the day, we're not bottlenecking that 1030 by putting like a Celeron or a Pentium with it. It's same across the board, even tests, and we can go ahead and compare the numbers fairly, well, relatively easily. So with that being said, let's take a look at the performance difference between our 1080 Ti and our 1030. And taking a look at these numbers, it's actually fairly interesting to see. Whilst the numbers are definitely massive in terms of the Overwatch numbers, there's quite a big delta there, at the end of the day, we're noticing a fairly average performance difference of about 137 FPS difference between the 1030 and the 1080 Ti, with the real big difference again coming in eSports titles as they're a little bit easier to go ahead and run. Synthetics were also due here to back this one up as the gap was respectable but actually not as big as I thought it would be. The really big gaps did again come in the eSports titles and whilst I didn't actually manage to get time to test CSGO, uh, I did have a quick play around with it and there was a massive jump just like what we saw in Overwatch in the CSGO title. Now for those asking why I didn't test more titles or different titles, at the end of the day I had one hour with the 1080 Ti and one hour with the 1030 across two different sessions, so I didn't exactly get all the time in the world to test all the different games. However, with that being said, I did test enough to get a fairly solid idea of the difference between these two different cards. And if we take a look at performance, we're only seeing about a four to five times performance increase going from the 1030 up to the 1080 Ti, which was again, really surprising. Honestly, I thought there would be more to like a seven to eight times performance increase, but no, we actually got something smaller, like a four to five times increase. Now this gets even more interesting as the 1030 here in Australia retails for $110, whereas the 1080 Ti retails upwards of $1,000, and that is a 10x price increase with only about a 5x performance increase. So what on earth are we actually paying for on top of actually getting, well, a higher tier video card? And at the end of the day, we're actually getting a lot more with the 1080 Ti than we are getting with the 1030 that can't be represented on paper. Things like all of Nvidia's new technology, so their multi VR, eye rendering, whatever the hell that thing's called is popping up right here, and all the other new technologies that just aren't able to run on the lower end cards are also to here, not to mention being able to do things like multi-monitor setups without the need for weird adapters like you would on the 1030, and the fact that you can drive multiple monitors at higher than 60 FPS in games with the 1080 Ti versus what we are getting here on the 1030. Not to mention we get things like more VRAM at a higher speed, better silicon, better bin chips, and overall higher quality components components on these higher end video cards as manufacturers are going to be putting much higher end components such as solid capacitors, better RAM and all that kind of stuff on their higher tier cards versus what we're getting on the lower tier options. Overclocking is also to a lot better because we have much better coolers, again much better components and overall much better support for overclocking these higher end cards versus the lower end cards that sort of just have pretty much bargain basement bin type of parts. Don't get me wrong however, the budget end cards still work but the more expensive ones definitely give 
give you a better experience. And not to mention, RGB LEDs can be found on your top tier video cards. So sure, 10 times the price for only 5 times the performance sounds really terrible, but at the end of the day, if we actually factor in everything else that these top tier cards from Nvidia are bringing down the line, it's actually worth it for a lot of people and makes up a good value. However, with that being said, if we strictly only look at the numbers, that price tag should be a lot lower because it's only delivering five times the price. We should only really be paying five to six hundred dollars Australian uh, for the 1080 Ti if we're only going on that 5x performance increase. But again, we are getting a lot more than just raw performance there. But otherwise, guys, let me know down in that comment section, were you expecting a higher performance difference? Were you, like me, expecting more of a seven to eight times performance increase between the low-end 1030 and the high-end 1080 Ti, or was this something you were more expecting? Do let me know down in that comment section. If you want to pick up one of these cards, I've left them linked down below. Otherwise, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.